guys, and welcome to our second set of video notes for Chapter 3. Today we're going to start talking about projectile motion, and today we're going to discuss what I call horizontal projectiles, and we're going to describe what that means in a few minutes, but this is going to be uh, the main part of this PowerPoint. So, a couple of things about a projectile. Now, when I say the word projectile, y'all are probably having a picture in your mind maybe of like a cannon or someone sh uh, uh, kicking a football. Either one of those examples are perfectly valid, but there's another kind of projectile too, and there are some classic um, characteristics of projectiles that we need to talk about first. We consider a projectile anything that's thrown or launched into the air and subjected to gravity. So this is going to apply to things that not only go up at an angle, but things that will fall off a ledge or even bend uh, straight up, we consider those to be projectiles as well. The path of a projectile is a parabola. If you don't remember what a parabola looks like from math, remember that it looks like a, a upside down U or, ooh, that's not showing up on that. It looks like an upside down U like this. A projectile can start at a given height and move horizontally toward the ground, and I'm going to show you guys some examples of those in a few minutes. Those are the ones we're going to talk about today. An example, some examples of these would be like a ball rolling off a table or a bullet being fired from a gun. And then the more classic example of a projectile are things like catapults or cannonballs, throwing a football, shooting a basketball. All of those things are what we call angled projectiles. So here's a little picture difference between the two of them. This is what we would consider to be a horizontal projectile. This is an object that at first is traveling horizontally and then because of gravity it starts to fall downward. Here this is what we call an angled projectile because the projectile is being launched at some angle to the ground. And we're going to do these next week, but this weekend we're just going to focus on these guys right here. Right, a projectile is exactly like an object in free fall, except now it has a horizontal velocity. Remember when we talked about um, free falling objects, if I'm throwing a ball upwards, the ball only has one velocity. It has an initial and then it has a final, but it's going in one direction. Now we're going to start talking about two directional motion. So these are going to be objects that are traveling initially one way but then because of gravity they start to fall downwards. So this ball, if I'm going to roll a ball off the top of a table, which is a pretty classic example of this, this ball is actually traveling in two directions at the same time. It's traveling over, right, and it's also traveling down. So hopefully you can see that the ball's velocity is actually made up of two different velocities, two different vectors. We have one that we call our horizontal velocity, and then we have one that we call our vertical velocity. So, a few key ideas about horizontal projectiles. At the start of its path, the projectile is moving horizontally, so that means there's no vertical motion just yet. It's not going to start experiencing a vertical velocity until it actually starts to fall. So at the very beginning of its motion, all of the horizontal projectile's velocity is in the x direction, or it's in the horizontal direction. So because we don't care about air resistance, the horizontal velocity won't change. This is very, very important. Star this, underline it, whatever you need to do to remember. The horizontal velocity of a projectile is always constant. There's nothing acting on the object horizontally to make it change its speed. Gravity doesn't act left to right, correct? Gravity only acts up and down. It would be very weird if gravity acted in a direction like this because then we would be pulled in all kinds of ways, left and right and up and down, and it wouldn't make any sense. So. What that means for a projectile, and I'm going to draw a picture with some vectors that's a little bit more to scale. So here we have our tabletop here. And I'm going to show a ball, marble, what have you. 
the path the ball is going to take is going to fall like this. Now, as the ball is starting to roll off the table, as it's moving, it has just a horizontal velocity. So I'm going to draw the vectors at every point here. Now remember, this horizontal velocity is not going to change as the object moves down. So I should draw a vector that's about the same size at every point. Now, we just discussed that the ball is moving in two directions at once. It's moving over, right, which we are going to call our x direction. But it's also moving up and down, which we're going to call our y direction. So, this vector or this projectile now has a vertical velocity too. So let's draw that. So up here at the top, the vertical velocity is zero. There's none. It's not falling yet. Once it starts to fall, what happens to objects that are under the influence of gravity? They start to get faster and faster and faster, faster and faster. So it's accelerating in the y direction because gravity acts up and down, but there's no acceleration in the x direction. So we have two different kinds of motion. No acceleration and acceleration. So hopefully you guys can um, figure out that we're going to have, whenever we have a horizontal projectile, we're going to need to use two different equations for this motion, since we have two different kinds of motion happening. So we just drew all that. We just drew all that. And this is a little bit of a cleaner picture if you couldn't see what I just did. So, um, remember that gravity only acts up and down. The horizontal part is not going to act at all. So how do those two velocities that the object has actually turn into just being one velocity? How do we know how fast it's actually going? Well, we're going to take those horizontal and vertical parts and we're going to add them together, just like you guys added all of your vectors together in your homework the other day. And those two vectors that we add together are going to be what we call the result velocity or the actual velocity of the projectile. So let's look back here at my paper. So if I wanted to add my fy to my fx, that's going to get me my resultant velocity, or my actual velocity of my projectile. Now, to do that, I of course need to know these, and I'm going to need to use Pythagorean. I would need to square this and add it to this squared. The tough part is really just figuring out what these individual velocities are. And it's not even that bad, but we're going to do a couple of examples. So let's look at this. A ball leaves the edge of the table with a horizontal velocity of 10 meters a second. After two seconds in the air, it's traveling at a velocity of 20 meters a second in the y direction. What is the actual velocity of the ball at that moment? So here is our picture. Ew. They're telling us that the ball is leaving the tabletop with a speed of 10 meters a second. And then they tell us after two seconds, its velocity in the y direction is 20. So they want to know what is the actual velocity of that projectile. So remember, if it's leaving the tabletop at 10 meters a second, that means that is its horizontal speed. And that is the speed, horizontally, it has the whole time. So we're going to do our vx plus our vy. So when we add vectors together that are at right angles, remember, because our y is going to be going down this way. This would be 10 squared plus 20 squared. And that's going to get us a velocity of the square root of 500. Let's look at our next example. And oh, we just did that. OK, if we know the horizontal velocity of our projectile, it's possible to figure out how far from the edge of its launch it's going to land. Now, remember that the horizontal distance doesn't change. There's, I mean, I'm sorry, the horizontal 
speed doesn't change. There's no acceleration. So the only equation that we can use for that part of our problem is this, right? V in the x direction equals change in distance over time. So let's look at this example. A ball rolls off a tabletop with a velocity of 15 meters a second. If it's in the air for 0.4 seconds, how far out from the edge of the table will the ball land? So for this one, our horizontal velocity is 15. The time in the air is going to be 0.4. So that's going to leave us with a change in x of 6. Let's look at the vertical motion now. The horizontal motion is really easy because it stays the same, the velocity stays the same, it doesn't change its speed. But the vertical direction, we have acceleration happening. So we have to use a slightly different expression uh, to figure out that information. Now remember, our kinematics still apply, right? So we have velocity in the y direction. We can use a couple of expressions to help us with this. We can use velocity in the y direction final equals velocity in the initial direction, in the initial y direction, plus at. Or another one that we use a lot is this guy here. These two are the most commonly used ones with horizontal projectiles. This one becomes real easy most of the time because the initial speed in the y direction is always zero. So we usually say that change in y is equal to 1 half at squared. And of course, because it's falling, the acceleration is always about 10, give or take. All right, so let's look at the examples. Let's find the height the ball in the previous example fell from. So in the previous example, our time was 0.4 and our initial x velocity was uh, 15. But we want to know the height. The height is our change in y, and it's always equal to 1 half gt squared. Or, I'm sorry, I keep using gg as gravity, guys, so it's the same thing, it's new. So, if we have 0.4 squared, our change in our height is going to be 1 half times 10 times God, right? Pretty easy. Okay. Um, it's possible to solve for the time an object is in the air. If we know the height it fell from, we can just use the same expression, right? If we know that the dinner that the dinner table is 0.8 meters high, we can just rearrange this equation and figure out what our time is because the acceleration is always going to be the same. All right. Let's take a look at an example real quick. Um, that we can work together, and then I'm going to give you guys a couple to do on your own. So Tom chases Jerry across a one meter high table. The mouse steps out of the way, and the cat slides off the table and strikes the floor 2.2 meters from the edge. The cat flies through the air for 0.5 seconds. What was the cat's speed when it fell off the table? So here is our one meter high table. Now this is the cat. That's all supposed to be ears. Sorry, I'm not good at drawing a cat. Anyways, he's going to slide off and fall on the ground, and he lands on the floor 2.2 meters from the edge of the table. So this distance here, this is our 2.2. This is our change in x, right? Because x axis runs left to right, so this is like x runs left to right. The time that the cat is in the air is for half a second. So they want us to figure out what speed did the cat leave from the top of the table. So we've got two different expressions to help us do this. One for the x direction, right, because the initial speed is your x speed all the time with these projectiles. So we know that this is going to be the case because the object doesn't accelerate in the x direction. And we also know in the y direction that the change in our y is equal to 1 half at squared. So we know the time and we know the distance that the cat is landing so we can figure out his horizontal velocity. 
once we figure out that horizontal velocity, that horizontal velocity is his initial speed that he left the table with. So we've got our Vx equals 2.2 over 0.5, and that gives us an initial horizontal speed of 4.4 meters per second. Okay, let's look at this one. A ball is thrown horizontally at a speed of 30 meters a second from the top of a cliff. If it hits the ground four seconds later, how high is the cliff? And how far out from the edge of the cliff does the ball land? So let's look at um, how to draw it first. We'll keep it here so we can see all of our variables. So here's your cliff at a speed of 30 meters a second. So our speed here is 30. The time for our projectile is four seconds. And they want us to figure out how high the cliff is, first of all. And they also want us to figure out how far out from the edge of the cliff does the ball land. So we've got two different unknowns, and the best way to do this is to write down the, very, the equations we're going to need to use to solve them. Here, and then our change in x is vx times v. I want you guys to do this one on your own, and I also want you guys to try to do this one. I'll give you a second to write that one down. And we're going to talk about angled projectiles um, later. Have a good night.